Good morning, everyone. Good morning. To all of you gathered here in the cathedral and to all who are following us today on Salt and Light Media, welcome to our celebration for the 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God our Father, may the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the Gospel today, Jesus sends the Twelve on a mission. He sends them forth two by two. He sends them forth to do good, and he advises them to travel light. We sometimes carry many burdens in life. We carry a lot of excess baggage, and sometimes the Lord is calling us to let go of that in order to follow him more freely. Let us pause for a moment of silence and pray that God's mercy, God's love may become real and active in our hearts. You were sent to heal the contract of a heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, in the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. O God, you show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who profess the Christian faith the grace to reject what is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does him honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Amos. 
Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered, I'm Messiah. I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet, righteousness and peace will kiss each other, faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, in our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption to sonship as his own through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, God has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, who had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. May 
revere the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, enlighten the eyes of our heart, that we may know the hope to which we are called. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus called the twelve, and he began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. Jesus said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that place. And if any place will not welcome you, and if they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust on your feet as a testimony against them. So the 12 went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. And this, my brothers and sisters, is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord of Jesus Christ. Travel light, keep moving, do good, trust in God. That's the homily in essence. Now I just need to develop the points. For this is the advice given by Jesus to the Twelve in the Gospel today as they set out on their first missionary journey. And there is much we can learn from the advice that Jesus gives his disciples. For we too are pilgrims sent on a journey, chosen by Christ, called by name, empowered by his grace and entrusted with a mission. In Mark's gospel, the ministry of Jesus, teaching, healing, casting out demons, reaching out, marks the triumph of good over evil and wholeness over fragmentation. We know that from the beginning, Jesus' ministry drew both praise and criticism. He had his fans, but he had his detractors also. Suspicion, opposition, and even hostility, Jesus had to deal with all these things. By the third chapter of Mark's Gospel, we're already hearing that the Pharisees are plotting to destroy him, the scribes have accused him of being in league with the devil, and even his own family was concerned that he was losing his mind. Last Sunday, we heard of Jesus' less than warm welcome from the hometown crowd in Nazareth. Their lack of faith so great he could perform no miracles or great signs. It must have been tempting for Jesus to throw in the towel or pull back for a while. And yet he responds differently. Instead of pulling back, he expands his mission. He calls forth his most trusted followers, the Twelve, and he sends them out to share in his mission. So Jesus gives them very concrete advice before sending them forth advice from which we today can profit as we seek to respond to God who calls us and sends us on our mission in life. So as I mentioned, there are sort of four parts to the advice. The first part is travel light. When you go to the airport, it's always easy to tell seasoned travelers from novices. Frequent flyers travel light. They know what they need and what they don't need. They know what you're allowed to carry on to the plane, what needs to be in your check baggage, and the benefits of traveling with no check baggage at all. Now in Jesus' time, what did you need on a journey? Certainly a solid walking stick and a well-broken-in pair of sandals, for there would be lots of walking. But no bread, no bag, 
no money. Radical trust in the providence of God and in the generosity of others. Detachment. Not long ago, some friends of mine made the journey to Santiago de Compostela, and pilgrims setting out on that journey are encouraged before they leave to lay out everything they think they're going to need on their bed and then put at least half of it back. The excess baggage we drag around is not only unnecessary, but it slows us down, and it makes it harder to get to destination. Think of all the attempts that we make to declutter our lives. I know that I had all kinds of resolutions at the beginning of the pandemic of how I would use that time to declutter so many parts of my life and my house. In some ways, it just got worse. And often it's only when we're forced to move that we have to downsize that we realize how much stuff we've accumulated over the years and how much our closets, garages, bookshelves, and basements fill with things that we rarely use, don't really need, but somehow have a hard time letting go of. But Jesus says to us, travel light, cling to nothing, let go. The less you have, the richer you are. Depend on me. So that's the first piece of advice, travel light. The second is keep moving. The detachment Jesus invites us to embrace is to be extended even to the success of our mission. Jesus sent out the 12 as itinerant preachers. They weren't sent out to build churches or establish communities, but just to lay foundations. And once that was accomplished, they, they, they were meant to leave and move on. Now, of course, we like to settle into a comfortable space and just stay where we're already liked and accepted. But Jesus tells them to proclaim and to be present, but then to move on, to accept hospitality graciously and to bear rejection no less graciously. When Jesus tells the disciples to shake the dust from their feet if they're not accepted, he's not telling them to thumb their noses or to be disrespectful. He's actually telling them to let go. Don't carry the rejection with you to the next place. Don't let it have power over you. A wise priest told me many years ago that what makes a good priest is not so much how you succeed in everything you do, but how you handle the setbacks and the failures. And they happen in all of our lives. So maybe we need to ask ourselves, can we handle rejection without taking personal offense? Can we keep continuing to believe in our mission and embrace it without taking ourselves too seriously? That we, can we can't change anyone? Like the disciples or like Amos in the first reading today, we too can feel that we are poor and without qualifications or credentials, except the call of God. But Jesus says to us, keep doing it and keep moving. The third piece of advice Jesus gives us is to do good. When Jesus sends out the twelve, he gives them three tasks. Proclaim repentance, cast out the evil spirits, and anoint the sick. That mission of Jesus still exists today, for the afflictions of sin, evil, and illness in all their different forms continue to impact our communities, our church, and our world. We've known what it's been in the last few weeks and months to struggle with revelations of our part in the many sins committed in this nation against our indigenous peoples. And yet, as Christians, we bear witness to a love that is more powerful than hatred, to a healing more powerful than any disease, and to a God who desires to forgive, restore, and heal. The depth of this mission is spelled out in our second reading today from the letter to the Ephesians, in which Paul retells the whole story of our creation and redemption. God has destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, a grace bestowed on us through his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches of his grace. This is what we bear witness to. This is is who we are. And finally, Jesus asks us to trust in God and in each other. 
It's really important to note that Jesus sends his disciples out two by two and not alone. Now, why was this necessary? Scripture scholars suggest several reasons. One was the physical danger of traveling alone so that one could sleep while the other one kept watch. Or it was the belief that the testimony of two witnesses was necessary to confirm the message they proclaimed. But perhaps it goes even deeper than that. I think Jesus knew the cost of discipleship and mission and the discouragement that we can feel when we're rejected, the fatigue when we've walked long and no one offers hospitality, the many human needs we experience along the way. We trust first in God, but we also need friends and partners, people with whom we can share the successes and the burdens, someone who can be there for us when the going gets tough. Jesus wants his disciples to know, both then and now, that even if no one else was interested in hearing and receiving the gospel, they would still have each other, and they could encourage each other to remain faithful to the call. For he taught us, whenever two or more are gathered in my name, I am there with you. So whether or not the whole world is converted, as long as there's communities who gather to listen to the word, to share their lives, to pray and break bread together, and to bear witness, the work of the kingdom is being accomplished. So as we celebrate today God's love for us in this Eucharist, and as we are sent forth into the world to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, let us open our hearts so that we can respond to how Jesus is calling us and sending us. So let us travel light, let us keep moving, let us do good, and let us trust in God and in our fellow pilgrims on the journey. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we come before the Lord today to offer our prayers, let us pray for the needs of the church and the world. Let us pray that we will be witnesses of Christ, his love and his healing. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, attentive to the needs of the marginalized persons in our midst, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders, heeding the cry of those who feel excluded from society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the isolated of the world, especially those in institutions, hospitals, or prisons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community, 
reaching out to those in need, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us continue to pray for all the families in Florida who lost loved ones in the collapse of the building where the bodies are being recovered. For all those who are being affected by heat waves and fires in so many places, let us pray for healing and action in our relationship with our First Nations and our, all of the indigenous peoples of this country. Let us pray that we will follow in the footsteps of Jesus and be messengers of healing, peace, and love. We pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we thank you for calling us and sharing your mission with us. Help us to respond generously to the call of the gospel in all that we say and do. And we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when received by those who believe, they may bring us to even greater holiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your wonderful light. And now with all the angels and saints of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, for you love the human race and you walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, Christ opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. He gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on your church's oblation, in which we show forth the sacrifice of Christ handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and forever among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Christian, our Bishop, Alain, his Auxiliary, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, with all ministers of the gospel, with all men and women you send forth to share in your mission, 
and with the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and carry heavy burdens. Help us to serve them truly, following the example and command of Christ. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Benedict and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by the divine teaching of our Lord Jesus, we too can pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other some sign of the peace of Christ. of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Behold the Lamb of God, behold Christ, who sends us on a mission, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ lead us to everlasting life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, 
come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Let us pray. Having received these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, the saving effects of the Eucharist upon us may grow and bear fruit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. Amen. May Christ nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. Amen. And may he turn your steps towards him and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. People of God, let us go forth in the peace and in the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.